In Space Watch, NASA scientists say its Curiosity rover made a discovery that could indicate signs of life on Mars. The rover detected high amounts of methane in the Martian air. On Earth, the gas is typically produced by living things. NASA says it's still analyzing data to confirm the results. The rover is also performing more tests, and new results are expected back on Earth Monday. For more on this, CBS News space consultant Bill Harwood joins us from Merritt Island, Florida. So, Bill, what does this what does this mean? Could there be life on Mars? Well, it's interesting, Elaine, but I think the main thing to keep in mind as we talk about this, you kind of have to take this with a big grain of salt because even though they detected some relatively large amounts of methane, we're talking something that you or I wouldn't wouldn't notice, 13 parts per billion. Uh, so this is a very, very uh, minute trace, but on the other hand, methane doesn't remain in the atmosphere for long. The sun breaks it down. So if they're seeing it at all, it's recent. So the question is, did it come perhaps from some sort of uh, microbial life under the surface of Mars that has finally come out, or could it have been caused by some sort of geothermal process? That's possible too. So uh, I think it's a wait and see sort of a situation. If it turns out uh, that they can verify these levels, and that would be one possible indicator of life. But proving something is actually there, of course, is a much more difficult question. Well, scientists first reported signs of methane on Mars about 15 years ago. What is significant about this new discovery? Well, it's really interesting because these detections before came from orbit, uh, and they're really at the very limit of detectability, and they, they appeared to be seasonal. In other words, it wasn't there all the time. Uh, some satellite might detect it, another one didn't. Uh, back in 2013, the Curiosity rover detected methane very briefly in the two parts per billion range, and then it went away again. Uh, so, you know, you can make an argument to yourself that uh, if it is, in fact, seasonal, that might also reflect biological activity on Mars as seasons change, and so that the levels rise and fall and rise and fall. Uh, but again, this is, this is very subtle stuff. It's... Uh, very sophisticated experiments have to detect it in the first place. And then, of course, we're not talking about something up on the surface you can see. This would be something underground. So, again, I caution everyone to take this with a grain of salt. It may or may not turn out to be something, but it's certainly interesting. All right. So, no space cows on Mars is what you're saying, Bill? Not yet. <laughs> okay. I was leaving that for you. But cows not are yet. a huge source of methane gas here on Earth. We know that much. All right. Absolutely. So, Bill, NASA is planning a mission launch next year dubbed Mars 2020. How will this operation right. further our understanding of the red planet? Well, Mars 2020 is a virtual duplicate of the Curiosity rover, except it's carrying some di different instruments. And unlike Curiosity, the 2020 rover is designed to, uh, specifically uh, to look for signs of past life on Mars. Now, it will not be equipped with instruments that could directly detect microbial life today on Mars, unless something very unusual happens. Uh, but it's certainly going to push the frontiers of knowledge back about what might have existed there in the past. They know already from Curiosity and other spacecraft that Mars once hosted a habitable environment. The question is, uh, did it, did it, was it in place long enough for life to evolve, and are there any traces that might be found today? And also, the 2020 rover, interestingly enough, is going to uh, collect rock samples, package them up, so that a future spacecraft that might visit the area could take those samples and return them to Earth. So it's a very ambitious, very expensive mission, and uh, everybody in the Mars world is really looking forward to it. Well, Bill, we also want to ask you about other NASA work underway. The agency is bringing three crew members home from the International Space Station Monday night, and SpaceX is launching its Falcon Heavy rocket the same night. This will be the first time it has launched at night. What more can you tell us about these operations? Well, you know, it's really interesting. Bringing people down from space is probably the higher priority mission since human lives are involved. Uh, but that Falcon Heavy rocket, if the viewers remember, this is the one with the, the three core vehicles it launches. Uh, they're going to try to recover all three of those core stages with landings. And, of course, taking off at night, it is going to put on a show, Elaine. It, it, it promises to really be something if there's clear skies down here uh, in Florida. Uh, but there's 24 payloads on board. It's probably the most complicated mission uh, SpaceX has ever attempted. These satellites are being deployed in multiple orbits about $750 million worth of equipment on board. Uh, and one of the things the mission will do is, is help certify the Falcon Heavy for launching big spy satellites and other very expensive government payloads. So very important mission 
uh, for both SpaceX and the, the Pentagon. Wow, a lot at stake. All right, Bill Harwood for us. Bill, thank you so much. Sure thing.